Previously on The Nanny. Uh, Miss Fine, Niles just had a heart attack. <gasps> oh, I'll tell you, it really makes you think, doesn't it? How unpredictable life can be. Mm, well, that's right. That's why you have to live every day to the fullest. Mm -hmm. You never know when it's going to be your last. Oh. like another pillow. Of course. I tell you, Niles, if I don't talk to someone soon, I, I'll get an ulcer. Yes, and God knows your health should be what's foremost on our minds. <laughs> Niles, when I was in that hospital bed with Miss Fine, I just... I just lost all self-control. I, I, I became like a, like a wild animal. I just threw her down on the bed and practically, my God, I practically ravaged her. Well, he was so gentle, he was like a little lamb. <laughs> I was so intoxicated, my head was reeling. You know, he sat on a Demerol needle. <laughs> Didn't even know. Then what happened? Then we got to second base. <gasps> oh, Fran, I, I only hope that happens to me someday. Oh, sir, I only hope that happens to me someday. <laughs> I tell you now, sir, if Cece hadn't walked in when she did, I, I, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, how do you, how do you stop yourself when you're about to make love to a beautiful woman? Well, usually I wake up. <laughs> I, I'm just afraid, Niles, that, that Miss Fine might... I might have left her with the impression that, that things were moving a little faster than they really are. What am I supposed to do? Well, you could admit that you love the woman and marry her, or you could invent some stupid ploy like um, redecorating a room to distract her and buy yourself more time. Good. That's good. Let's do that one. <laughs> Fran, I, I really have to go. Oh, I... but Val, I have so many more things to tell you. You're my best friend. Oh. I need you. Miss Fine. Ciao. <laughs> Miss Fine, I, I, I have to talk to you about our relationship uh, and the way it seems to have uh, escalated. Well, wait a minute here. You said our relationship and escalate in the same sentence. Should I book a haul? <laughs> I, uh, <clears throat> I discussed this whole thing with Niles and yeah. um, <laughs> he suggested I invent some stupid ploy to distract you and try to slow things down. <laughs> <laughs> Did you fire him? <laughs> But I said I don't want to distract her. I say let this relationship grow. Let it blossom. She's a beautiful woman. She's warm, tender, caring. My God, this room looks shabby. <laughs> huh? no, I don't think it's been redone for ages. Say, would you like to redecorate it? Me? Great! Wonderful! <laughs> Take all the time you need. I don't care if it takes weeks, months. A okay. oh, year and a half would be perfect. <laughs> oh, my God. This sucks. <laughs> Sal, what's happening with you and Mr. Sheffield? Nah, duh. <laughs> Ever since me and Mr. Sheffield started to heat things up, we haven't had one minute alone together. Open a mouth. <clears throat> Just say, go away. Leave us alone. We want privacy. Go away. Leave us alone. We want privacy. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Miss Fine. Oh, hi. Uh, 
Sylvia, would you mind, I'd like some time alone with your daughter? <laughs> there are some Hershey's kisses under the cushions on the couch. <laughs> It's so nice, finally, to have some time alone together. Yeah. I've missed you. Me too, you. Mm. Which couch? The office! <laughs> you were saying? Well, I, uh, I know I've been dragging my feet a little with regards to our relationship, but I'm going to change that. I think it's time you and I had a date. <gasps> oh, my God. You're asking me out on a date? Mm, yes, yes, yes. I was thinking Friday night. Oh, I can't. I gotta cook for the Sabbath. Oh, really? Yeah, right. Where are we going? <laughs> well, as you know, I've been dying to get Elton John to star in my new musical. Yeah. And it so happens he's invited me to the premiere of his new movie, <gasps> Tantrums and Tiaras. Oh, Mr. Sheffield, <laughs> you don't know how happy this makes me. Not only have you asked me out on a date, but you actually trust me to not be concerned that I'm going to embarrass you in front of a celebrity. Of course. Oh, Miss Fine, it's been two weeks. The mourning period has to end. Oh, it's just so tragic. I mean, it shouldn't have been. A lot of people screw up their first day. <laughs> now get out of those depressing clothes. No. I, I need to wear this. It's, it gives me closure. Besides... Black is slimming. <laughs> and I'm gonna need it. There's nothing more pathetic than a woman who eats out of frustration because she doesn't have a man. Do <laughs> we have any more of this mesquite barbecue sauce? Because it's really yummy. You can just it's forget ridiculous. it, Brighton. It's never gonna happen. Oh. Never gonna happen. Just because I screwed up with Elton John, you're not gonna date me again? Oh, you meant Brighton. <laughs> I won a radio contest, and the winner gets Brian Setzer to shoot a video in their house. Brian Setzer, I love him. He used to be a stray cat. I've been listening to him since the early 80s. Hey, is it true back then people used to listen to their music on some sort of primitive, large, black vinyl disc? <laughs> Only when we weren't enjoying our favorite pastime, child hurling. <laughs> Dad, it's... Uh, the answer, Brighton, is still no. But what's the big deal? I mean, it's three hours on a Friday night. Look, maybe your father has plans Friday night. Dinner for two al fresco at Nello, starting with the fried artichokes, God willing. <laughs> no, I do not have plans Friday night. And I am not leaving this house. But... You want one? <laughs> well, I found my gift for Yetta's bridal shower. Oh. I got her the Kama Sutra big print edition. <laughs> Niall, she's an elderly woman. Meanwhile, with her new bionic hips on this page 89 is like a walk in the park. <laughs> what did you get, your grandmother? <laughs> oh, I can't afford to get anything. I don't know where all my money goes. Mm. Watch it. You're gonna spill on my new Gucci bag. <laughs> oh, Miss Fine. Oh, that is a lovely outfit you're wearing. Oh, you like? I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> you're in a good mood this morning. Well, why should I be depressed? Just because a woman three times my age is getting married before me. <laughs> oh, Mazel tov, you're getting married. <laughs> why on earth is Yetta getting married at her age? I was wondering that myself. I guess it's because somebody asked her. <laughs> yes, well, uh, she waited a long time before rushing into a second marriage and... That's a very wise thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> 95. 
Have you uh, seen this month's issue of Park Place magazine? Oh, who cares? It's always some horsey-looking debutante clutching her blue blood fiance. <laughs> Oh, Miss Babcock, it's you and Chester. <laughs> they did a spread on wealthy heiresses and their dogs. <laughs> ah, look at this. I didn't know that you walked Chester in Central Park. Oh, not me, Lupe. <laughs> that is, till she up and died on me. <laughs> Besides, who's gonna bust me? The mud? <laughs> <laughs> Cock, with all your dough, you really should find a place to hide that money before the government gets it. How about right here? <laughs> oh, well, Nanny, fine. If you're strapped for cash, I have a job that would utilize your unique talents. Oh? You know how to use a pooper scooper, don't you? <laughs> Are you suggesting that I be your dog walker? I'll pay you $10 an hour. Please, do you know when I get paid to watch three children? Half that, when do I start? <laughs>
Atlantic City. <laughs> You know, Ma just gave me a coupon. You can get a complete prime rib dinner for 17 cents. 17 cents? Well, it comes with a fine Chablis. Nanny Fine. Yeah? Why don't you fry up a sizzling and whip out the Monopoly game, because that's as close to the boardwalk as you're getting. <laughs> Miss Fine, what uh, Miss Babcock is trying to tell you in her own delicate way is that this is a strictly business trip. Yep. All right, fine. I've got a date Saturday night anyway. Uh, a date? Yeah, he's a very nice-looking guy. No gray hair, is it? <laughs> ah, I just realized, of course, you're going to have to come to Atlantic City to, to take care of the children. Maxwell, this is my project. I am in charge. And there aren't going to be any children, and there's certainly not going to be any butler. <laughs> Well, I want the children to come. Okay. Well, I'll need a butler. Fabulous. Good. Well, it's all settled then. Now, as you make the arrangements, Miss Fine, you'll have to cancel that date. Fine. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Hello, George Clooney. Yeah, Saturday's off. <laughs> Your grandmother is such a sucker. She thinks she's a finalist in Ed McMahon's publisher's clearinghouse. You're just jealous because I'm gonna be a millionaire. You better be nice to me because I got a very long memory. Waitress, could I get a cup of decaf? I got a letter for you. Oh. From... Cambodia. <laughs> Cambodia, oh my God! Pack your bags, we'll hide her out in Canada. <laughs> oh, look, Val, it's from Mei Ling. Oh, who's Mei Ling? I please, these two Michiganers adopted an orphan in high school for 17 cents a day. What a steal. Bell peppers at four ninety nine a pound. <laughs> now we were in Michigan, as that poor child happens to come from a country where you gotta scrape and scrounge and fight for every last morsel of food. Get that go up here, I'm kidding you. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win? She's coming to New York three weeks from the date of this letter. Ah! Which is tomorrow! Ma! Oh, I'm sorry. I taped it to the refrigerator to give it to you, and then I forgot it was there. Well, that's because the refrigerator door is never closed. <laughs> oh, Fran. I can't believe our little girl is coming to see us. Gosh. Well, I wonder which one of us she'll look like. <laughs> Val, she's not going to look like either of us because she's adopted. Uh, Oi! Yeah, it's... Uh, am I an idiot? No. Oh. <laughs> well, let's just pray she inherited your brains. <laughs> she's got a very good heart. So does an artichoke. <laughs> Lucky is your grandmother getting married at her age. I mean, do you know the odds of a woman over 35 finding a husband? One in 1,200, 45.6. <laughs> uh-huh. How much do you weigh, Ma? Who can remember numbers? <laughs> like a virgin. <laughs> wow, Yeti. I want whatever you're on. Well, uh, this is for inflammation. No. This is for spastic colon. <laughs> and I got an ounce of glaucoma medication that my doctor grew. <laughs> but I don't use it because it gets me kind of loose. You mean sexually? No. <laughs> For the very first time. <laughs> Look at her all at Twitter like an 85-year-old schoolgirl. Well, I enjoy it. At least you get to dance at your mother's wedding. 
Because at the rate that I'm going, you'll be coming to mine in an urn. There, I said it before you did. <laughs> oh, 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 that's him. Let me get the door. Okay. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like flying to him on gossamer wings. <laughs> First, your mouth is open and there's no chewed up snack walls in it. <laughs> Ma, when you told us that you were engaged, you neglected to mention that he's black. <laughs> You're black? <laughs> no wonder. <laughs> Read me my horoscope. Oh, okay. Uh, Scorpio, tomorrow you will awaken to... <laughs> What are you woo-hooing? I didn't say anything. I heard tomorrow and awaken. I'm cool. <laughs> My philosophy professor has so opened my eyes oh. to realize that my eyes may not even be open. Oh. I mean, I may not even have eyes. I may not even exist. Yeah, well, according to your father, neither do I. <laughs> I mean, do you realize that red may not even be red? I mean, blue may not even be blue. Well, thank God gray can still become black, according to my mentor, Lady Clairol. <laughs> you know what else Steve says? Nah. You call your professor Steve? Oh, just over cappuccinos. You're having cappuccinos with Steve? Uh, you're talking too much, honey. Daddy's getting nervous. Shutty uppy. <laughs> Well, of course I'm getting nervous. An older, distinguished man, a young, beautiful woman, right under his nose, day after day. What do you think is going to happen? Huh? According to my experience, nothing. <laughs> it's fine. I want you to go down to that university and talk to Margaret's professor, who probably has nothing but sex on the brain. I've had worse assignments. <laughs> I'm not joking. Oh, come on. What's it gonna look like if I go down there? I mean, the girl's 18 years old. I don't care if she's 35. Which isn't old either. <laughs> you are her nanny. Now, go, please. All right. I'll go, too, and pick up a little education. Oh. I can only keep Sammy happy in the bedroom for so long. Sooner or later, he's gonna want to talk. <laughs> Why, honey? I've been sitting next to the same guy for the last four years, and I know he likes me, but he won't make a move. You've been waiting for some guy for four years? Mm -hmm. That's nothing. <laughs> it's not pathetic? No. <laughs> she is so in denial. Oh, Miss Fine. I've got to ask Mr. Sheffield for some time off, so I'm giving him this tie. Do you think you'll like it? Well, he ought to. It's his. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, he won't remember his tie. But I wonder if I should change out of his suit. <laughs> Niles, why don't you just walk yourself right in there and tell him you need some time off? Be honest. Speak from the heart. Tell him that you need some private time. You work like a dog. Dana, oh, you know what? Don't use that. I'm gonna say that when I go in there and ask for this weekend off. <laughs> This weekend? Yeah. But that's when I want off. My butler's glee club is having a big competition in Bermuda. Well, I'm sorry, but it's the big fine family reunion in Niagara Falls. And we have relatives coming in from all over. Tel Aviv, Budapest, Boca Gables, phase four. I didn't know you had any family left to fly in. I thought they all lived in my kitchen. 
Look, why don't we just have Mr. Sheffield decide? That's fair. Oh, why are we arguing? I can relinquish three days of the Wilson's butler pulling down his sock goddess to show me his tan line. <laughs> really? Well, that's very sweet of you. Now, relinquish means you're not going, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you, thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. Oh, I've got work to do, so you tape Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, of course. <laughs> You have much to learn, young Jedi. <laughs> Sir, please let me have this weekend off. My last vacation was two years ago, but it doesn't really count. Miss Babcock showed up, and then there was this tropical depression. Mine. <laughs> but, Mr. Sheffield, you know, I've got to go to my family's reunion. Oh. <laughs> well, to be honest, Niles, I... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I, I, I did just give you a month off already. I was recovering from a heart attack. <laughs> Look, how you budget your vacation time is your business. I'll bring you back Cuban cigars. I'll send my mother to Cuba. I'll make you baked Alaska. I'll send my mother to Alaska. <laughs> but in all fairness, Miss Fine, Niles did ask me first. <gasps> He's wearing your suit. Well, she's wearing Miss Grace's skirt. <laughs> That's how I just won. Fran, I've been wearing a training bra for about three months now, and what is it exactly that it trains them to do? <laughs> you know, honey, you really can't train them. Eventually, they're just gonna get older and go their separate ways. <laughs> Funny you should bring this up. Since I started my diet, I went down an entire cup size. What cup size did you go down to, Ma? The Stanley? <laughs> Never mind, I'm doing good. <laughs> Even the soup that I brought over is diet. Yeah, Cabbage, tomato, onion soup mix, plus I added a little seasoning to give it some flavor. With what? Tortellini. <laughs> My sweetie. Hi. Fran, you are not gonna believe what I got from my cousin Giggy. Oh. Two tickets to the launching party of Michael Bolton's new opera album. Oh my God, Michael Bolton. Wait a minute, your cousin Giggy knows Michael Bolton? <laughs> you bet. Do you know that Giggy is responsible for him cutting all his hair off? True. Apparently you can't say Bolton without spitting out your gum. <laughs> For that, Michael Bolton gave your schmuck cousin tickets? Let me guess, the tickets fell out of Bolton's pocket when he was beating Giggy up. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, how lucky are we? So, are you free Saturday night, Fran? <laughs> Is she free Saturday <laughs> What, you're not? I'd love to go. I only wish this was something that Mr. Sheffield would invite me to. You know, Michael Bolton, he sings such romantic songs. Mm. Well, Fran, you know, Daddy asked you out on the first date. Why don't you ask him out on the second? Ma raised me to believe that it's the man that should do the courting of the woman. Sweetheart, I didn't know what I was saying. <laughs> it was the 60s. I was taking a lot of antacid. <laughs> you know what? I think you're right. I am going to march myself in there and ask Mr. Sheffield to this Michael Bolton concert. You go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm no genius, but I don't think she's going to be able to get tickets at this late date. You <laughs> really don't need the I'm no genius part, Val. <laughs> ah, happy New Year, Isaac. Thank you, Mr. Sheffield. Oh, Maxwell, look at the poster I had made to convince Margot to do our show, Marie Antoinette. Now, listen, when she gets here, I don't want any screw-ups. 
What are you doing? I'm sniffing for Alberto VO5, top ramen, anything that reeks of Nanny Fine. <laughs> I told you, she's out of the house. Okay, okay. Oh, look, I had them paint on Margot's trademark mall. Isn't it amazing how one bodily imperfection can make someone famous? Oh, then you should be known worldwide. <laughs> Maxwell, have you noticed how calm the house is without Nanny Fine here? No one to get in the way, make a scene. <laughs> just to meet a movie star. Miss Langton. Oh. <clears throat> Margot. Uh, you've met my associate, Cece Babcock. Oh, yes, we lunched at Spargo. I adored her. <laughs> Is she here? <laughs> That's me, Margot. Oh. Now, about my co-star, I was thinking about that delicious Lopez boy from Saved by the Bell. <laughs> what is he, 80? Next to him, you'll look less French. <laughs> Maxwell, darling, do something. Your gardener is gawking at me. Hmm? <laughs> um, uh, would, you, would you excuse me a minute? Uh, there's a wandering Jew on the terrace that needs transplanting. <laughs> You insane! What are you doing? Don't you push me! What my whole thing is inside? What way? Oh, hello, Miss Marley. Famous mole, where is it? What? Here it is. <laughs> oh, hi, Miles. It's fine. The way you're dressed. Ah. You're dressed. <laughs> I'm taking my father to a basketball game for his birthday, and you know, he likes women to dress so conservatively. Oh, is that why your mother dresses so demurely? <laughs> Meanwhile, one time she bought this backless dress, and he made her return it because it showed too much cleavage. Cut too low in the front? You wish the front. <laughs> Kids. Close the door. It's cold. All right, Brighton. The party starts at 8.30, and there's going to be a lot of hot chicks there. So you owe me. Maggie's taking me to a mixer at her sorority house. Oh, great. <laughs> Bring a geek pony. I, like, so own that trophy. <laughs> All right. That's fine. Here we go. Two center court tickets to tonight's basketball game. Oh, I so appreciate you arranging these tickets. This is the first time that I've been able to afford to give my father something really great. They're comps, right? <laughs> Think of them as my gift to you. <laughs> Thank Don't you. Don't you look adorable today. Thank you. You know, you could be Margaret's sister. Oh, sister, stepmother. <laughs> oh, Miles, that's Danny. Will you get it? Mm -hmm. Oh, good evening, Sylvia. <laughs> oh, Niles, you smell delicious. Oh. What is it, ham? <laughs> Ma, what are you doing here? Where, where's Daddy? Oh, he couldn't make it, but he wanted us to wave to him from the good seats. <laughs> He's not coming? He didn't like my gift? Oh, sure he did. He just wasn't feeling well. He ate a whole box of snorsages. <laughs> The dog's been dead for five years. You still kept her treats? Although you got her collar and leash hanging in your bedroom closets. But that's probably none of my business. You're right, it's not. I'm so disappointed. I can't believe he's not coming. I, I 
really wanted to see him. So come on, we'll go. I'm dying to see a basketball game. I don't know how I put it off for the past 50 years. <laughs> Good afternoon, Miss Fine. Good afternoon, Mr. Sheffield. You know, the kids are at school. Niles is shopping. We could do it. <clears throat> All right. Hi, Fran. <laughs> Hi, Max. You look beautiful, Fran. Ooh. Over 40, and you can say it again so quick. Um, I'm home. Oh, oh. Uh, eyelash right yeah. there. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. Good cover there, uh, Max. <laughs> Who told you about the first name thing? The guy that owns the fruit stand. How the hell does he know? I'm making ambrosia tonight. <laughs> Fran, guess what? what? My, my friend Billy invited me to spend term break with him and his family in the Middle East. Oh, oh that, that is so exciting, sweetheart. You know, his, his father is royalty. Yeah, he's the uh, Sultan of Khorasan. Wow. Gee, I wonder if he knows my cousin Barry, the waterbed king. <laughs> so can I go, Daddy? Maggie and Brighton are going away. Oh, sweetheart. Much as I'd like you to go to Khorasan, it's, it's very, very far away. Yeah, honey, we'll have a good time here. The house will be empty. It'll just be your father and me and, you know, I don't think Niles has ever been to the Middle East. <laughs> no, not Niles. I, I need him here. I have a mountain of work to do. I, I tell you what, Miss Fine, why don't you take her? Uh, <laughs> excuse me, honey. You know, I think this little girl will be very disappointed if she doesn't go with Niles. Grace has never been anywhere with Niles. This little girl. <laughs> Honey, 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 go upstairs. Let me talk to your father. Okay. Well, I'm obviously being a little too subtle here, but with all the kids out of the house, we could call each other Fran and Max in every room of the house. Oh, <laughs> uh, tempting as that sounds, Fran, this is a very busy time for me. I have investors to entertain, and I'd like to serve them something other than Gino's pizza rolls. <laughs> One brunch and I'm branded for life. <laughs> I don't understand why you don't want to spend time with me. Wait, who said I don't want to spend time with you? No, I have to earn a living. Uh, yeah, that's right, I have expenses. You know, this year alone, my food bill doubled. Now, please, let's not bring my mother into this. <laughs> oh, God. I guess I'm going back to the desert, but I might not return that quickly. Our people tend to dilly-dally there. Fran. Miss Fine. <laughs> you and Nanny Fine are having a big old fight about shipping her off to the Middle East. Who told you that? The garbage man. <laughs> there we are, home sweet home. Thank you so much for coming all the way to Khorasan just to say you love me, Max. <laughs> now, you haven't said it in New York yet, so say it again. Fran, aren't you getting kind of tired of hearing it? Or is that just me? <laughs> there you go, sweetheart. Fran. Yes? I love you. <laughs> Hi, everyone! We're Guess what? Your father has something he wants to share with you all. <clears throat> I've told Miss Fine I love her. Mm -hmm. oh, what else is new? <laughs> oh, oh, yes, I didn't take it back. Oh, congratulations! Wonderful news. Shall I get you a four? What for? To stick in yourself. You're done. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Oh, how does it feel to wake up an engaged woman? Well, you know how sometimes they say when you finally attain your dream, it's always a letdown? Mm -hmm. They were wrong! <laughs> <laughs> Shall I prepare your carnation instant breakfast, Mrs. Sheffield? You called me Mrs. Sheffield. I did, I did. Say it again, say it again. Mrs. Sheffield, Mrs. Sheffield. <laughs> Can you get me a satellite dish? <laughs> 
we're only engaged. Wait until after the honeymoon. I'll get you Ted Turner on the roof with a hanger. <laughs> The future Mrs. Sheffield's mother. <laughs> Ma. Hi, Ma. So, do we have a ring yet? Ma, you know that when they caught the mugger, they never recovered the ring? Meanwhile, that mugger's girlfriend has given him the conjugal visit of his life. <laughs> Darling, it's not a real engagement until I can take my daughter's hand and say, stick these carrots in your soup, Mrs. Glickman. <laughs> Well, you know, we're gonna use the pop top for a while. I mean, Max and I love each other, and that's all that really matters. I don't care if I ever get a ring. Oi, she's turning into a shiksa right before my eyes. <laughs> Oi, sweetie. Darling. How you feeling? Any better? A little. My back's still a bit stiff from the mugging. You know what's good for that? Mm? Walking. Have you ever tried walking through the Diamond District? <laughs> As a matter of fact, Sylvia, I have set the whole morning aside to take your daughter shopping for an engagement ring. Oh. oh. You know, we should go to my Uncle Stanley's jewelry store on 47th Street. He has got a gold-plated Borscht Belt chess set with a Joey Bishop Bishop. <laughs> That's probably gone. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd really rather go to my jeweler at Cartier. Retail? Out <laughs> of the question. Stanley would be so insulted if his future nephew didn't at least stop by. <laughs> All right. But I have to call Cece first. You know, what, what with everything has been going on, I forgot to tell her about the engagement. Oh, I've taken care of that for you, sir. <laughs> Fran and Maxwell are engaged, it looks like you're a loser. She'll be happy all her days and you'll become a boozer. What are you doing? We're arm wrestling to see who gets your room. Now, y'all, she's a little girl. <laughs> you're hurting me. Oh, I'm sorry. Ow! Sucker! <laughs> Meanwhile, you're so busy designing who gets my room. Where am I supposed to sleep? Well, Fran, once you're married, you move in with Daddy. Oh, my God. This just keeps getting better and better. <laughs> oh, there's my adorable new roommate now. Mm, morning, darling. You know, sweetie, last night you didn't give me that little something that I'm used to getting from you every week. Well, <laughs> Fran, since we got engaged, I didn't think I had to give it to you anymore. Wait a minute. I know what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Your paycheck. Oh, thank God. That's what I'm talking about, too. <laughs> but, honey, even though we're getting married, I still want to work. We have always been a two-income family. Yes, dear, but your income always came out of my income. I still want to have a career. I don't want to be one of those wives that just sits around having lunch with the girls or shopping or, or getting their hair done. All right, well, you know what? Maybe I'll try it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, in just seven weeks, this is going to be our room. Ooh. Our bed. Oh. Our chair. Oh. Our lamp. Oh. And my closet. <laughs> oh. And who says size isn't important in the bedroom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is what I picked out for Maxwell to wear to my high school reunion party. It's like having a great big Ken doll. Uh -huh. <laughs> Only mine is anatomically correct. Please, God. Meanwhile, this is the first time you got a reason to go to your reunion. You should be more concerned with what you're gonna wear. You know, I just thought I'd wear a simple, drop-dead gorgeous fiancé and accessorize it with this. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. I can't wait to see Naomi Dembo's face when you walk in. Oh, she was so mean to us in high school. She, she told everyone that we were lesbian lovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know it backfired on her because we were never so popular with the boys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, hands up, anyone.
anyone who doesn't belong in here. I bet you weren't expecting three gorgeous gals in your bed. Yeah. Now, don't go getting any ideas. Yes, well, I think this has sufficiently put that fantasy to rest, Sylvia. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I just wanted to show the girls what you're wearing to my high school reunion Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night? I, I thought you said it was next Saturday. Well, it, it was next Saturday when I told you about it last Saturday. Ah, well, uh, this Saturday I, I have to fly to Washington to talk at the National Endowment for the Arts. Oh, no, you have to come. The last two reunions, I carried a man's coat and said my fiancé was in the bathroom. I don't think that they'll go for it a third time. <laughs> What do you want me to do? Cancel on the President of the United States? Well, he's been known to put pleasure before business. Why can't you? <laughs> Niles, what is that sickeningly sweet, overpowering smell? The cologne you gave me for my birthday. <laughs> Don't you just love it? What's it called again? Tester. <laughs> Say, wait a minute. Cologne, what's that, new oven mitts? And you're wearing a girdle. <laughs> Miss Babcock is coming on from the sanitarium. This has nothing to do with her. I'm wearing it because I pulled my back. Oh, yeah, sure. And I wear a wonder bra because I sprained my breasts. <laughs> oh, hi, darling. darling. Oh, what have we here? The proposal from the wedding planner? Uh, yeah. Oh, tell me, is the caterer going to be charging us by the person or by the couple? Well, after all the samples that me and Ma consumed, the caterer decided to charge my side of the family per person as a couple. <laughs> well, that's outrageous. The bartender's doing the same thing with your side. <laughs> really have to use this guy. I mean, I could plan this wedding myself. Oh, no, 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 no. We want it to be nice. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, uh, fancy, uh, uh, classy. Uh, <clears throat> when do they need the deposit? You don't think that I can make a nice affair? Listen, I know how it's done. You just need a very good theme. Something that's elegant and understated. Starlight Express. Do you skate? <laughs> Fran, it's not that the Duchess of Kent wouldn't love to arrive at the days on rollerblades, but <laughs> you're my princess. I want this to be the wedding of your dreams. But this is the wedding of my dreams. <laughs> Sir, it's your brother with some urgent news. Oh, yes, Nigel, what is it? Oh, my God, I see. Yes, uh, well, thank you for calling. Uh, bye. What? Uh, that was Nigel. Uh, apparently, last night, my father passed away. Oh, honey, I'm so sorry. Hello, hello, I'm back! <laughs> well, what's with the sourpusses? Who died? <laughs> Sir? I have to talk about this replacement Miss Babcock sent over. I don't like her. I don't like her at all. <laughs> Why not? She's doing a wonderful job. She's very efficient. Well, I don't know. There's just something about her that rubs me the wrong way. Hello, hello. <laughs> Maxwell, here are the documents from your attorney. Niles, there's something stuck to your hair. What? A big, fat, ugly butler. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? A cell phone for Fran. <clears throat> yeah, I thought it would help with the planning of the wedding she has to do. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> What's that? A pager. With all the running around she has to do, I thought this and her own limo would come in handy. <clears throat> oh, you must have pulled a big one. <laughs> Shall I close the door? Why don't you? You're on the wrong side of it. <laughs> Just tell me. I did have a heart attack, and the doctor says it helps thin my blood if I'm kept constantly in the loop. <laughs> oh, will you stop it? Well, apparently my finance is a lot more complicated than I thought. My attorney thinks it's a good idea if I... <clears throat> well, I should, um... I'm going to ask Fran to sign a prenuptial agreement. Why don't you just walk around downtown Iraq dressed as Uncle Sam? It'll be quicker. <laughs> This isn't just about me and Fran. Apparently, there are some family accounts in my name. I'm responsible for my brother and my sister, their children. Now, I'm just going to explain this to Fran in a calm, rational, firm tone of... Oh, here's my pretty darling. 
Does that look nice? Oh, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Look, I've got you some presents. Oh, <laughs> a sense. cell phone Thank and you. a pager. Wow. And look, it vibrates. Oh, it's <laughs> vibrating. Oh, you better page me all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, uh, <clears throat> it's for the chauffeur of your new limo. Oh, my God, my own limo. Oh, I don't know, honey. It just seems so show-offy. Oh, well, don't worry about it. It has tinted windows. No one will be able to see you. Oh, well, then what's the point? <laughs> oh, honey, don't forget this afternoon, we're gonna go see Sammy's niece, Edna. She's a wedding photographer, and she is supposed to be phenomenal. Mm. You know, she does all of those dogs dressed as people. She did the Beatles using four Yorkies. Oh, it was very clever. <laughs> well... <clears throat> Don't worry, sweetheart, I've cleared the whole afternoon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there is just one little favor I'd like you to do for me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, well, uh, it's just it's, there's some silly little papers I'd like you to sign. Yeah. Oh, honey, sure. Whatever you need. You're the business head in this family. You need me to sign something, I'll sign it. Just as long as it's not a prenup. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere else. Now you're on the wrong side of the door. <laughs> Some water. <laughs> you know, Ben, it's boiling in here. If Mr. Sheffield's having auditions, why don't you just put on the air conditioner? Well, I am not gonna have a bunch of chorus girls auditioning for my future husband in a place that might be nippy. <laughs> Fran, don't be so insecure. These women want to be famous in the theater, not famous for marrying a millionaire husband. Oh, my God, there's Marla Maples. <laughs> Oh, uh, hello, Miss Maples. Hi. I'm Fran Fine. This is Val. Hi. Oh, I must say, I am just so sorry about you and the you-know-who. <laughs> but I'm sure that you must have met someone already and you're completely unavailable. Oh, honey, I am not about to go jump into another relationship. I am on my own and I've got my career going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's really none of my business. Break a leg. <laughs> You see, Fran, she's not after Mr. Sheffield. Shh. You thought I was after Maxwell? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Max were over a long time ago. Say what now? <laughs> well, back when me and the you know who were separated, Max and I had a little um oh, you know. Uh, no, I don't know. Embellish Bubby. <laughs> well, we sort of uh well we kind of we really flirted a lot. <laughs> Who knows if things have been different? Maybe. Miss yeah. Maples, Mr. Sheffield asked me to tell you that he's very sorry, but the part's been cast. He will, however, keep you in mind for roles in the future. You know what they say, one door closes, another opens. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I have not waited around five years for some little shiksa to come in and ruin my wedding. <laughs> Thank you, Niles. You know, you could be Ma if it weren't for the whiskers. <laughs> Although... <laughs> if anyone needs me, I'll be upstairs preparing the guest room. Oh, why? Who's coming? Oh, Mr. Sheffield's brother, Nigel. He's arriving any minute. Oh, that's great, because, you know, we haven't seen Nigel since I almost ran off and married him on the phone! I know! Oh, my God, Fred, what are you gonna do? I don't know. You know, I've kept this whole thing a secret from Maxwell all this time. I keep going with that. <laughs> oh, my God, that's him. Oh, what am I going to do? Okay, now, wait, don't panic, don't panic. Calm down, calm down. All right, look, you know what? It happened a year and a half ago. Right. We're adults. Yeah. We'll just act like nothing happened. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Hello, darling. Oh. <laughs> How have you been? <laughs> No, Dad. Last day as a free man. No more wild nights, no more wild women. So, uh, basically, same old, same old. It's like father, like son, eh? <laughs> yeah. Your sister, sir. Oh, Jocelyn. Mm, there's the groom. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> 
darling, handsome as ever. Oh. <clears throat> Niles, you're always stunning. Oh, stop. <laughs> Press everything in my bag, would you? I said stop. <laughs> so, uh, oh, where is she? Where's, uh, where's Mother? Oh, she declined the invitation. Seems she despises your fiance. What? That's ridiculous. I talked to her the other day. She said she adores Fran. Abhors, darling. Oh. <laughs> I know it's horrid, but you know Mummy. She doesn't think anyone has the class of a Sheffield. Yeah, so? <laughs> In the short year that I've been here, I have added a certain element of style and panache to this house. Hmm. Why did I eat corn? I love my late wife, Sarah. Oh, absolutely. She thought she was a real stitch. Yeah, right. She did say stitch. <laughs> oh, Jocelyn, I can't believe this. My own mother not coming to my wedding? Well, fine. Fine, see if I care. I don't need her approval. All right, maybe, maybe Fran was a little rough around the edges at the beginning, but after five years of being exposed to the finest things in life, one grows. You got the edible on tits and petite? <laughs> Wouldn't this look adorable on me? Ma, I'm getting a little scared just seeing it next to you. <laughs> How are we doing on time? Oh, let's see. Uh, 19 hours and 10 seconds till the big event. Ah, well, what about till the wedding? Ah! <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you got the pina colada and pizza. That's great. Ma, wait till you see the gorgeous negligee that I ordered. It is so black. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I ordered this in white. No, I'm sorry. They shipped it in black, hon. But I ordered it in white, doll. No can do, babe. Well, doll better do or babe will kill doll. Everybody calm down. Look, darling, my daughter is getting married in 19 hours and 9 seconds. Is there something that we could do to expedite the situation? Are you trying to bribe me with a candy bar? Yeah. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to help you. The South Jersey store can't ship till Monday. You'll have to take the black. She can't wear friggin' black. It's her wedding night. She has to look like a virgin. I said, look. In just 24 hours from now, I'll be holding Mrs. Sheffield in my arms. You as happy as I am? This is the happiest day of my life. Congratulations, sir. Thank you, Miles. Hey, what about me? I'm the woman who's making you the happiest man in the world. Miss Fine. Congratulations. So, uh, what's the suitcase? Oh, wait a minute, I know. If we elope now, the sooner we get to our wedding night, Excuse huh? Excuse me? You made me wait five years, and now all of a sudden, because you're in the mood, you think that I'm gonna come to you just like that? Come to Mama. <laughs> <laughs> so what, you're so excited you're back for the honeymoon already? Oh, sweetie. I'm a Jewish woman going on a two-month cruise. Do you really think this is all the clothes I'm going to need? Yeah. Oh, oh, honey. Oh. oh, I wish I could stay, but I gotta go to mass. What? Yeah, you know, it's bad luck for the groom to see the bride 24 hours before the ceremony. Sweetheart, we have the house all to ourselves. Oh, I know, but no. No, sir. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, that's the 24 hours. What? That was a warning. We only have two minutes left. Oh. I can do it in two minutes. You can? Well, darling, it has been five years. Uh, let's go. Oh, gotta get out now. Ma, we still have two minutes left. Trust me, there's only one man who can satisfy a woman in two minutes. 
Colonel Sanders. <laughs>